Rome, the Eternal City, has more than 2,000 years history, filled with magnificent monuments, such as Colosseum and Pantheon. Romans also created their unique culture, way of living, which influenced Western civilization significantly. That is why Rome is the most visited city in the world. If you plan to visit Rome for three days, where should you stay, what to see, and how to get there? I have been in Rome many times, and the most recent one is in mid-October, 2024. Here is my advice to help you plan your trip. There are hundreds of videos telling you how to get to city center from Rome International Airport, as it is very complicated. In fact, it is much easier than many U.S. cities, such as New York, Chicago, or San Francisco. There is Leonardo Express train, every 20 minutes, to take you to Roma Termini. Just follow the sign. It costs only 14 euros. Now, let's talk about where to stay. Most tourists visited places are in two areas, each of them is walkable in one day. The ancient Rome is close to the train station, about 15 minutes walking distance. The Renaissance Baroque area, of historical center, includes Vatican City, is much far from Roma Termini. From this map, you can tell Monte is the perfect location, because it is close to train station, as well as ancient Rome and historical center. That was where I strayed recently. My apartment was on Via Urbana, a cobblestone paved back street, next to Via Cavour, Rome's major thoroughfare. It took 9 minutes to walk from the train station. It's a typical Rome residential area, with a lot of cafes, pizzerias, restaurants, bars, and laundry facilities. That's where Roman natives live, and it made me feel as a part of local community. Walking down the street for two minutes, there is Cavour Metro Station. From here, one stop up is Roma Termini, and one stop down is Colosseum. That makes the location so convenient, a truly superb place to stay. My apartment was on the third floor, clean and spacious, with a living room, a kitchenette, and a bedroom. Bathroom is clean and functional. The rent was about 200 US dollars per night. It's one of the best Airbnb units I have rented. Highly recommended. If you stay in Monte area, the ancient Roma may be your first day destination, it's literary next door to you. You can easily spend half of the day visiting Colosseum, Roman Forum, and Palatine Hill. It is the most popular destination, so you should buy your ticket online in advance. It costs 16 to 30 euros per person, including all three places. In addition, there are a tons of monuments, landmarks, museums to see, and half a day is not enough to see everything in this area. Here is a major thoroughfare that connecting Colosseum in one end, and Victor Monument in another. You can walk the Imperial Avenue for 15 minutes, but there are so much to see, and you have to pick your own choices. Vatican City may be your second day's destination, and it's easy to get there from Monte. Just go to Cavour Station, taking the Metro line for one stop, and switch to a line at Termini Station. Ride 5 stops, and get off in Ottaviano Station. Then, walking 8 minutes will bring you to Vatican Museum. It has the largest collection of ancient arts in the world, and Sistine Chapel is the best of Michelangelo's creation. One can easily spend half of the day here. But it's very popular and line is very long. So you better be prepared to wait, and to buy the ticket online in advance. After the museum, 14 minutes walk could bring you to St. Peter's Basilica. It's the largest church in the planet, and it's usually very busy. You don't need to buy ticket, but the line is very long. There are a lot of historical artifacts, such as Michelangelo's sculpture and St. Peter's statue. The wall and selling are full of beautiful frescoes, and you can immerse yourself here for half a day, but there are more to see in Vatican. Between Street Peter Square and St. Angelo Castle is Via della Conciliazione, a short but very wide cobblestone paved street. You can visit St. Maria Church and Da Vinci Museum, if you choose to. Compared to St. Peter Basilica, Castel St. Angelo is less no, but it is much older, a must-seen monument in Rome. It was built 2000 years ago as Emperor Hadrian's mausoleum. It evolved into a castle later, and Pope escaped from St. Peter Basilica into the castle twice in the mid-age for his security. Its history mirrored the evolution of Rome itself. Unfortunately, both the castle and bridge were partially closed for renovation when I was there. 
the entrance moved to sideways behind the fence. But it's still worth your time. From San Angelo Bridge, a short walk would take you to Piazza Navona, another must-seen monument. Three fountains there are Baroque masterpieces. However, they are all masked now, undergoing renovation for next year's jubilee. But St. Agnes Church is open, and no ticket is needed. It's a splendid masterpiece of Baroque period as well. The other reason I suggest you visit Piazza Navona as your last stop for the day is transportation. Next to the piazza is a bus stop called Rinascimento, and you can take any of these buses back to Monte. Get off the bus at Nazionale stop, you are just a few blocks away from home. The last day will be packed with visiting the rest of historical center, including Piazza del Popolo, Galleria Borghese, Villa Medici, Spanish Steps, Trevi Fountain, and Pantheon. Starting with Piazza del Popolo. Just like yesterday, you take Metro A for three stops, get off at Flaminio Station, and you are right next to Piazza del Popolo. It's the northern gate to Rome, with a twin basilicas, the second tallest obelisk in Rome. From here, three major roads radiating out, which form the city center. Above West Side Monument is one of the two observation terrains. After climbing 100 steps, you will have the panoramic view of the square in Vatican City. You then walk to the second terrace in the south, you can see the entire city down below, with Victor Emmanuel Monument in the distance. From here, a short walk would bring you to Galleria Borghese, one of the top art museums in Rome, featuring Bernini's most famous masterpieces and more. It is world-renowned Baroque art collection. Villa Medici is very close nearby. It's the residence of Medici, Florence's ruling family, but it had deep influence in Rome as well. Two popes were Medici family members. The villa is a splendid example of Renaissance architecture and arts, although it is lesser known than Vatican Museum or Borghese Gallery. Walking three minutes from here, you will be in front of Sacred Heart Trinity Church, on top of Spanish Steps. Walking down 100 steps is the center of Piazza Spagna. Spain was the superpower of Europe in mid-age, and Spanish embassy to the Holy Seat was nearby, thus the name, Spanish Steps. A short walk down the south is Trevi Fountain, one of Rome's most famous monument. However, it was fenced off for renovation recently, and you may not throw a coin nearby the water. But you can take pictures through the fence. Another short walk will bring you to Pantheon, the oldest and intact ancient Rome's building. This historical monument is free to enter, but the line is usually very long. But it's worth to wait in line to see this amazing structure, which created precedence for all the domes in the world to follow. This comes to the end of your packed day in Rome. From here, you walk 450 meters to reach the bus stop you were at yesterday, and one of those buses would take you back to Monte. By the way, in addition to all the restaurants on Via Urbana, there are even more on Via Cavour, that you may want to explore. I hope this video is helpful to you for your coming trip to Rome. Happy travel!